Hey everyone, I'm going to show you how to learn the neck quickly, hopefully, and why. I was with a student the other day and I said it's going to be great for them to multiply what they already know if they learn at least two strings, the names of the notes on the two strings. And he asked me why. So when I first started looking at the note names, it was just so I could move power chords around. This was back when I'd been playing for like six, seven months or something. I don't know. Anyway, so the other thing that I, I was explaining to him is if you understand the shapes that you're using, for instance, E major, these three notes are the three notes in the chord. So if I just move those three notes and I don't strum six strings, that's an E chord just with the fifth, fourth, and third string. If I move it one fret, it's an F chord, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, and so on. So with just that one shape, I can go through all of the major chords, major triads. The same shape can be used on different strings to get different sounds. So if I use it here, it's now an A minor chord. Once again, if I don't play anything but the three notes that I'm holding down, A minor, A sharp minor, B minor, C minor. So you can go through now, we've got all of the major, well, all. We've got a bunch of major chords and a bunch of minor chords. If you keep going with just that one shape, we have major and minor. Same concept applies. It's D, minor major, D sharp, and so on. I can put it here. I can be out of tune. All right, so now that's a C major. So now it's a C sharp major. Get what I'm uh, what I'm getting at here. So even with just understanding the names of the notes, if for instance, I can look at good old Google and say, all right, I look at E major, I look at the notes of the neck from a diagram online or whatever, and I go, all right, well that's an E chord, so this note is E. That's the boss in this this uh, chord shape. So if I know the name of the the notes along that string. I can move that shape using that note as my reference point. Oh, I need a G chord. There's the note G. Uh, you can do this on the other shape. So once again, that's the boss in this shape for an A minor. So if you know the names of the string, names of the notes on the string, then you can move A minor to any, anywhere you want. Um, one of the easiest things to do is to understand that a, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It goes around and around and around and around. Most of you are probably capable of understanding A, B, C, D, E, F, G in a loop. Or I look at it as in a circle, like the neck of the guitar. You start here and you get to the 12th fret and everything that comes past the 12th fret gets sort of spat out here again. So it's like a circle, circular pattern. If you can remember this main thing, if the alphabet is excuse me, alphabet is uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G in a loop. The only notes that don't have a fret in between them or no another note in between them is between E and F and between B and C. All the other notes have neighbors, upper or lower neighbors or a, a note in front of them. For instance, E to F is right next door, F to G there is an F sharp or G flat in between them. Same thing happens, G to A, G sharp or A flat is in between. A to B, there is B flat, A sharp in between. B to C, nothing in between. If you can just remember that, you can basically get through the whole chord, chord, oh my God, get through all the names of the notes along each string. You just need to know that's E, starting note, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E doesn't take that long to memorize it if you just take a few like 30 seconds a minute a day for a week I don't know same thing applies on the A string so I can learn all right A to B there was a, a, a note in between so I got two frets up B to C C D all right so we've got two strings that we can memorize the names of the notes on the next step you can use octaves you can continue going that way if you want to memorize up the guitar like that. Or the other way, uh, or one other way, is using octaves to find the other notes. For instance, two frets up, two strings down. 
that's the same note. So if I've learnt my E string with that octave shape, I've also learnt the D string. G, G, A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. It's not that difficult. Same shape applies on the next string with the fifth and the third string. Same distance. That note is C, that note is C. It's too easy. Oh my god, my nose is itchy. Ugh. Anyway, next octave shape we need to learn. So I've got G to G, G to G. So now it's three frets up, two strings down. So I've got my G notes. If uh, I move it down again, it's the same shape. So we have C and C and C and C. So with these two octave shapes, this one and this one, you can find the notes on the neck. Pretty cool. Um, so the, you don't have an excuse really, that's, that's it. And you'll be able to start using things you already know in different ways. Like, how do we apply it? If you know the name, if you know what key you're in, and you can find out what open strings are available, so I'm just gonna pick C major because it's easy. Um, and I can think, right, well, how, how many ways can I use that one chord shape, for instance, in C major? Well, I know A minor is in C major, so that works out all right. So let's, wait, let's think of a, a chord progression. If I go C major to A minor to E minor to G. There you go, nice and easy. C, A minor, E minor, G. If I don't want to play it like this, all right, I'm going to go C major. How do I play C major with this shape? And because I've got open strings available, I can strum all of them. It's not just a C major now, it's a C major 7, but we don't care about that at this point. So C major 7, then I've got the A minor. Then I've got, it was an E minor, but I want to use that same shape, so I have to put it up here. It might not sound like a great E minor, but that's not the point at this this stage. Then the next one was uh, G major. So now I have uh, C major, A minor, E minor, G. Let's see if it sounds any good. Nah. Nah. I wasn't a huge fan, but it's, it's a starting point. If I go now C major, a minor, that, that's fine. The E minor, wasn't a huge fan of it. So what I might do is add to the shape, the note, a bit more of an E just to solidify that. Still using that shape though. And then the last one was the G major. Maybe if I put the root note in the same way as I did with the E. It's a little bit nicer. So we've got The idea. It's up to you to pick if it sounds good or not. So there you go. I'm going to leave it there. That's fine. Learn your stuff. No excuses. Don't be lazy. Like, subscribe, follow, blah, 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 all that crap, and talk to you later. Cheers.